Hello, it's Darren at Moonhair Studio and today we're going to do something rather special because we're going to explore how you can take a single lead vocal line in Cubase and utterly transform it with backing vocals without any need to re-record. Now, like so many people, I'm not a great fan of those YouTube videos where it takes five minutes to get to the point of the video. So if you've come here because you've been having problems using the Generate Harmony Voices effect in Cubase, you know, it's greyed out in the menu and you can't work out why you can't actually use it, then skip to the end. I'll uh, put links in the uh, description and also in the index of the actual video itself so you can get straight there. For the rest of you, hang on in there. We're just going to go through the basics of how you set this effect up. If you want to see more detail about making it very realistic, then Dom Sigalis does a great video on it. Again, links above and below. Check that out. Uh, but let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do once you've got your vocal recording is to create a chord track. Now the chord track will drive all of the different chord progressions in the harmony vocals. It's really important that you have that there, otherwise Cubase will not know what um, different intervals to put in and it could sound a bit off. So you can create a chord track either by going up into project, add track and scrolling down to chord, or you can just right click in this section here um, and then add a chord track. So there we go. You'll need to record enable that if you're going to play it in. If you're a keyboardist, we can just play through and we can play the chords in and that will put them in. So let, let's just um, give that a go. We'll, we'll hit record and I'll try playing those in. Now, if you're playing the chords in, do remember that although you've got to record on the chord track, you do actually need to select the instrument that you're going to play it in on. So I played it in on the piano and the chord track is using the monitor track, which is the piano, um, as, as its guide to what you're playing in. So make sure you've done that. If you're not a keyboardist, then you can actually just draw these in. So if I just um, undo that, and we can just uh, take the pen tool and we can actually draw chords in where we want them. So, it, I mean, it's entirely up to you. Once you've drawn one in, if you just double click it, you can select the chord that you want. So if it was a D minor, diminished minor, sus4, whatever, um, and you can add root notes and all sorts of bits and pieces. There's even a chord assistant that can help you out. So just choose the way that you want to do it and then just click through your various chords and um, you know add in whatever it is that you want in there. Also do remember if you're not much of a keyboardist and you've got lucky, you've got your first couple of bars in and it's only going to loop around and, and you just don't think you're going to make it right to the end, you can always cut and paste. So just uh, highlight the chord sequence, do a control C or a command C if you're on a Mac and then control V will um, paste it in wherever you put your cursor. And so you can just go along and put all of your chords in that way. So now comes the fun part. We're going to record disable the chord track and now click on your lead vocal and we'll just um, solo this up so that we can hear that it's the right one. And so that's fine. And now go up into your audio menu, scroll down to generate harmony voices and that brings up this box and um, Dom in his video suggests that you leave this somewhere around about 70-80%. Um, so we'll we'll just put that on 70%. Um, and I'm going to choose three voices. You can go up to four, I think. Four um, yeah, four harmonies. But we'll just use three for this female vocal. And then just click OK and Cubase does its thing and generates 
those backing vocals. Let's have a, a quick listen. Now, um, there's a lot of tweaking you can do with this. Uh, the, the vocals sound a little bit odd um, because they're all crammed in into the space. And I feel like I'm, I'm repeating Dom a bit here, um, but uh, you really need to spread those out in the stereo field a little bit. So it's worth um, panning them around just so that they've got a bit of separation. Um, I'll pop that over there and that one right the way across. In fact, we'll let's have that one a bit closer um, and also well worth um, staggering them slightly so if we go back to the project window um, I'm going to just nudge these um, slightly so I'm going to go up here we'll use quantize um, select quite a small quantize amount let's do 164 and I've got two buttons on my um, nano control 2 here which are and nudge buttons left and right so we're just going to nudge them slightly out so that the voices aren't you know actually compact and and actually singing the same exactly the same vibratos and, and what have you let's have a quick listen to what that's sounding like sounds nice let's bring the backing vocals down a little bit that's sounding pretty delightful so that's basically how you do it and as I say you know check out other videos if you want a little bit more detail on this but let's get on to the problems that I had when I tried to do this by following other people's videos now the first thing to say is that if like me you're using a vocal VST instrument like a Thera Gold 2.5 and I would thoroughly recommend you buy this if if you haven't got it already because it's an awesome library um, so you've got a, you know, you've got a great vocal sound there, but you cannot click on this and then go and try to generate harmony voices. It's grayed out. It cannot handle MIDI. So you're going to have to render this as audio. Probably the simplest way is, is render in place. I've got a button for that, um, which just does it automatically. Um, but if you don't, it's in the edit menu and if you just look down render in place um, and then you've got your audio file so let's click on that and it's exactly the same uh, vocal if we run it back but now if we go in we can generate harmony voices in the way we did earlier on click OK and there they are I would advise that you actually convert your files to mono. It's, this process is really meant for mono files. And if you think about it, most vocalists would be singing into a single microphone. This would be a mono file. But as you can see, it, it does actually work. So stereo will work, but I, I would advise that. I'll link to a good video um, which Chris Selim did about how to convert stereo to mono files in Cubase. Now, the last thing that had me scratching my head for ages was that I had my audio files. I could rendered them down from two separate samples from the library. I just glued the two together so I could move them around as, as one. But if you have a look closely, you can obviously see it's two separate clips. Click on that and go into your audio menu and you'll find that Generate Harmony Voices won't work. It's grayed out again. So you're going to have to take this file and render it again. So we'll do another audio render. And then this one here you'll notice is one single clip. It's not, uh, it's not two clips now, it's one single audio clip. And from that, we can go in and generate our harmony voices. And so there we go. And they're all in there.
not sounding great at the moment, but again, you need to do your little adjustments and you'll get you'll get there. So thumbs up if you had a good time, um, but uh, don't feel that you've got to subscribe to the channel. Um, possibly better to subscribe to uh, Chris and Dom's channels. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, do check out Thera Gold. It, it is such a huge library. There's enough to keep you going for years. And um, hopefully I'll see you on the next Moonhair video. Cheers. Bye.